Hello everybody and welcome to the Redneck Catholic. Today we're going to be talking about 10 things that I think every young Catholic man should own or have and or at least should consider having. And I want to emphasize before I get started that some of these things are going to be more related to the spiritual side, right? The emphasizing the Catholic part of Catholic man and some of them are just going to be general things that I think every man should own. Uh, before I get started, I would also like to ask you all, um, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I've seen a lot of growth recently, and I like to keep that happening. So with that said, let's get started. It's no secret that manhood faces a crisis in modern times. To some extent, this is inevitable due to the increasing prevalence of white-collar jobs and the fact that a lot of men, for their work, they just sit in offices on computers all day. But I think it's also safe to say it's gotten a lot worse due to bad turns society has made in recent years, even bringing us to the point where we now have men dressing up as women being celebrated by the broader culture. Now. What I aim to do in this video is list several things that I think is, are good things for a modern man to have to kind of, of help him avoid this crisis and help him, help him to continue living, as a, living a good and fruitful manhood. So let's start with number one, a Bible. If you are a Catholic, or even any kind of Christian, then you believe that the Bible is the written word of God. What better direction can you have than the written word of God? The Bible has, at least for Catholics, it has 73 books that cover many different historical periods, many different themes of our faith, many important lessons for us. I read my Bible every night, and I highly encourage you to as well. A great goal to have is to read the entire Bible, and I'm not going to say a time frame here. Some people will read the entire Bible in a year. Some people just have it as a life goal, so I'm not going to go there right now. But I will encourage you to, at some point in your life, read through the entire Bible. And another reason this is very important is that many, many Christians today, but especially men, this is a serious issue in men especially, uh, don't know their faith or don't practice their faith, even if they kind of say that they believe in Christianity. So it is very important to read the most fundamental text of the Christian religion so that you understand it better and you understand what your faith is about. And I think with Catholics, reading the Bible, now this is different for Protestants, but uh, for Catholics, Reading the Bible is not all that you should do to learn about your faith. I should all, I would also encourage you to read the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It, it's uh, The Bible is already heavy reading. The Catechism is very heavy reading, but I still encourage it. Again, like the Bible, not something you need to do within a specific time frame, but I think it's a good life goal to have. Number two, a pocket knife. I cannot even begin to tell you how important and useful a pocket knife is. In fact, I've got mine on me right now, and I wasn't even planning on having it on me when I started this video. I just have it because I always carry it with me because of how useful it is. You can do all kinds of things with a pocket knife. You can cut rope or anything else you might need to cut. You can open a bag, and if things get really tough, you can use it as a weapon if, you're, if you get attacked but mainly it's a tool for everyday use, cutting things, opening things. Um, even in, this is, if you, if you don't have a screwdriver, they, I'll tell you from firsthand experience, they can make acceptable screwdrivers, at least on a flathead screw. So definitely um, a pocket knife is a very versatile and good thing to have if you're a man and you do a lot of physical things, which every man should do, even if it's not your primary job, you should not be sitting on a computer all day. 
So a pocket knife is something that will definitely help you get through all of the things you might encounter, all the problems you might encounter. So I definitely recommend every man, even those who aren't Catholic, even those who aren't Christian, to own a pocket knife. Number three, some real man's pants. I'm going to be very honest with you all. I think a lot of the pants made for men today look like they were made for women. You see guys wearing skinny jeans, short shorts that don't even come halfway to the knees. Um, these are clothes designed for women that they're now trying to make into men's clothing, which is really weird. I mean, there is a reason why skinny jeans and short shorts were designed for women. If you're a man, don't wear them. And I'm not saying it's inherently evil to wear male skinny jeans or male short shorts. Certainly a lot better than wearing female skinny jeans or female short shorts. But uh, I do think if you want to be a man, you should at least... It, uh, dressing the part helps you um, take on the, what you want to be, right? If you want to be something, dressing like it will help you to some extent or another. So that's why I encourage you to wear pants that look like real, man, real men's pants, whether they're hiking pants or work jeans or khakis or whatever it is, get yourself some pants that don't look like they were designed for women. Number four, a 22 rifle. So some people might not like that I'm getting into guns here, but I do think that in the modern world, it's very good for men to own guns. And I'll get into why a little, a little bit later, but for, for now, I'm just gonna stick to why I say a 22 rifle is very important to own. First, I said this video is specifically targeted at young Catholic men who might not already own a gun. A 22 rifle is just the best first gun to buy. I just don't see how there's any way around that. It's the best gun to learn how to shoot a gun with. There's very little recoil. They're easy to control. They're very fun to shoot. They're accurate. And the ammo for them is very cheap. They're also one of the few rifles that I would use for small game hunting because a center fire, not 22 rifle, a most high pa high powered rifles as they're so called um are much too powerful to shoot small game with they're for shooting deer shooting uh, uh coyotes pigs larger animals and the guns that i would go deer hunting with would demolish a rabbit or a squirrel so that there is no meat left at all that's where a 22 comes in handy you can shoot those animals with a 22 and there will still be meat left over. So if you're learning to hunt and you want to hunt small game, a 22 is what you should hunt small game with. Uh, 22s are also one of the guns that you can shoot all day and not be tired of shooting because of how low the recoil is and because uh, how the ammo is much cheaper than high powered rifle ammunition. And I say higher powered rifle, some people might take issue with that. Uh, that well, I'm using that term to refer to center fire ammunition for those who might take issue with me saying high powered rifle. So a 22 is just an entry level rifle, very fun to shoot. Um, not a gun I would encourage you to own for self defense. I would encourage you to own it as a fun gun, as a gun to learn how to shoot with, as a gun to hunt small game with. And um, I would also say, even if you as a man have foregone any right to self-defense, you say that you're willing to give up your, your right to self-defense in hopes of converting another person who might be attacking you. And on top of that, you have decided to go live like a hermit way out in the desert. So you have very little chance of ever needing to protect anyone else. And on top of all this, you've taken a vegetarian diet as a form of, of penance or self-deprivation, I would still encourage you to own a 22. And the reason why is because it is a shooting is a wholesome hobby that's going to take you off the internet more, 
get you out in the real world, real world more and um, help you to build the character required to focus and concentrate and have that fun that's involved in shooting. Number five, a pistol. Obviously, if you're that hermit I was talking about in the 22 video, in the 22 section of this video, um, there's no real reason for you to own a handgun. But if you are concerned about defending yourself and defending your family, which if you're a young man, as the Catechism says in paragraph 2265, those with other lives dependent on them have the duty to bear arms in, their, in those people's defense. So if you have a family, you actually have a duty to bear arms to protect your family. And so I would highly encourage you to buy a handgun, if, especially if you are a man with a family, to protect that family and defend them from whatever evil might be out there. Handguns have been the self-defense weapon of choice for a long, long, long time. Their small size and relative ability to be carried on one's person without alarming others is a reason that law-abiding citizens who want to be able to defend themselves have been using them for that purpose since, since the guns have even been around. Number six, a rosary. Especially as a Catholic, the rosary is a great thing to own. It's, uh, it's, one of the, it's a physical prayer item that you use to basically pray a devotion called the rosary, which is uh, 53 Hail Marys with some other prayers in there as well, and it helps you to keep track of them. There's a bead for every, for every prayer so that you don't lose count. I suppose you could pray the rosary without a physical rosary, but from my experience, I lose count sometimes even when I am using a physical rosary, so I wouldn't even want to know how many times I would lose count without one. You can also pray other devotions on the rosary, such as the, um, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, which is something that I do as a penance on Fridays. So. Definitely get a rosary. It'll help uh, your prayer life a lot. It'll help you to keep track of devotions that involve a high number of prayers without losing count. Number seven, a de get a devotion. A devotion is probably the first item I've mentioned so far that you don't have to buy. A, de a devotion is just a prayer or a set of prayers that you make every day as part of your relationship with God. Um, a lot of people will use the rosary in their devotions, but I encourage you, whatever your devotion is, to get, to get one, to have a set of prayers you do every day, and then you can uh, expand that and you can develop it as you go along in your prayer life. Number eight, a lighter. Look, I get it, it's the 21st century. Most people could not survive in the wilderness if they had a tent, a rifle, a water purifier, a fishing net, a fishing pole, plenty of fishing line, bait, um, a lighter, fire starting materials, and almost anything else they could ever want. I, I would imagine that most people would die in that scenario. But that doesn't mean that you ought to you should learn how to start a fire. And unless you're just going to dive in at the deep end and be the ultimate man of all men and just start by learning how to make a fire with just sticks, which is very difficult, then I suggest you at least start by using a lighter. It makes a lot of things easier. It also gives you the ability to, when you're at home, you can run a grill, you can, you know, light a fire, keep that fire going, and you can cook burgers or whatever else it is that you're going to be cooking on your grill. So get a lighter, learn how to use a lighter, and that will basically greatly improve your fire building ability. And fire building is a pretty important part, I would argue, 
of manhood because it, because it is such an important part of survival. If you don't have warmth, when it gets cold, you will die. People have died in of hypothermia in like the 50s Fahrenheit. I don't mean 50s like a time period, like the 1950s. I mean 50 degrees to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. People have died in hypothermia of that. So knowing how to start a fire is very important if you're ever in a situation where you're not in your house and you're out in the woods or wherever else a fire is knowing how to start a fire even if it's just with a lighter because if you go in the woods or in the mountains you should take a lighter with you that will and definitely can make the difference between life and death so i think every man should own a lighter and know how to use one number nine a fishing pole a tackle box and everything else needed for fishing Fishing is a classic male activity that even most women can do. So if you're a man and you can't fish, you need to learn how to fish. And to do that, you need to buy all the things you need to fish, which includes, but it is not limited to, a fishing pole, fishing line, a set of hooks, a tackle box. Um, oftentimes a net will come in handy as well. And, and there's a whole lot of things. I'm not going to include them all in this video. That you should get if you're going to take up fishing and i highly encourage that you fish at least once in a while so that you know how to do this basic survival skill it'll really set you apart from all the 21st century um, males who are completely helpless outside of a computer number 10 a dog and maybe this isn't for everyone because a dog can be expensive but I think having a dog is a pretty good thing for a man to have. Um, let, let's face it, a dog's probably the best companion for a man. Women are great and all, but chances are they don't want to go camping with you if it's raining and they know they're going to get wet. Your dog will be pretty much up for it. So a dog is a good, reliable camp companion you can have no matter what happens. Um, especially if you raise it right, it will pretty much just love you and want to do whatever you want to do. And in some cases, this, they can actually be really helpful. Having a second body can, can be more helpful than you think sometimes, even if it's just a dog. So a dog's a great companion to have. I've got one, and I certainly encourage you, if they're within your budget, to get one. Um, I honestly don't think spending the extra thousand dollars on a registered dog is worth the money, but I do think it is worth the money to get a dog. And so uh, that's what I've got. There are obviously many other things that are good for a man to own, uh, many things that might be even more important to own than some of the things that I mentioned. So uh, I encourage you, if you're a 21st century male who's trying to get to experience some real manhood and really getting back to the basics of what a man is, trying to deepen your relationship with God, trying to uh, deepen your ability to function in nature with all, without all of our, uh, without our little bubble that we've created for ourselves in the 21st century. If you want to be able to live outside of that bubble and be reasonably self-sufficient, these are some things to just get you started. Right, I don't just own those things, I own a lot of other things. But uh, I highly encourage you to at least kind of start with this list. And that's all I've got to say, so we'll close this with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, we pray for men everywhere, and uh, especially during this time in history where manhood has kind of run into a crisis in modern culture. We pray that men might uh, realize, again, your calling to them as men, and they might understand your will for each and every one of them. Help men to rediscover their manhood and what it means, and help our world to get back to a culture where we celebrate our sexuality, but we don't uh, denigrate it, and we don't try to make it into some kind of degenerate form of sexuality that we have today. Help us to get back to your will for us, and especially, I pray right now, for manhood. 
Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's all I've got. Y'all have a good day. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope to see you again soon on the Redneck Catholic.